Hi, I'm Dawn and this is where Chevy meets Bling. Welcome to the witching season. Joining me tonight for this taste of Halloween is Brandy from Making It My Own DIY, Annie from Crafting with Indiana Jones, and Monica from Up All Night DIY. The links to their incredible channels and this playlist will be in the description box below. To start this taste of Halloween, I'm going to share with you how I made the old timey newspaper from my last project, a shabby chic Halloween. This realistic looking newspaper was a really fun and easy to make and you only need a couple things to pull it off. I started with an online image, but you can use your own or create your own. You will also need a few or two, depending on how thick your newspaper is going to be, some of these 12 by 18 foam sheets. I am just using uh, my PowerPoint. You can use any program that you feel comfortable with. I found my image on my phone, sent it to my computer, and I did it in two parts. I flipped it on its side and I did half of it and printed it out. And here it comes and Sweet Friday's gonna check it out. He's like, here it comes, mom, it's printing. <laughs> Where is it at? <laughs> there it is. So there's part of it and then I did it again with the other half. If you notice, I have double S's on both sides. It'll be easier when I go to line them up on that foam. And it's gonna be kind of like hanging wallpaper, but, but on a flat surface. Now we trim them up right on the line. You can use a paper cutter if you want. I just find scissors just super easy, so no big deal. We trim them up and move on to the next step. This is where our foam sheets are going to come into play. And we're gonna also need some Mod Podge, and I'm going to use a matte Mod Podge and also this great big huge spatula, which I no longer use for cooking. And you will also need a paintbrush, one that is uh, acceptable for you to use with your Mod Podge. I am starting on the left side and just right in the center. I just wanna get that center strip down and I'm not lining it up with the edge of the foam because you don't know, <laughs> you know, Seriously, the, the variables here. So just, I you might waste a little bit of foam. I keep the scraps, but <laughs> you know me. So I'm gonna start with that center part, lay it down and rub it down nice and gently because we don't wanna rip our paper, but you need to burnish it down. Now on to the rest of the sheet of this page. And I am going to cover all the area on the foam that our our sheet our piece of paper will will come into contact with when i fold it over and you want a nice thin layer but it can't dry out too quick so just get a nice thin layer and then we are going to lay this sheet down and slowly work it from the center outward just like wallpaper be patient take your time and be gentle it looks like i'm pushing a lot harder than what i am but I am squeezing out the excess Mod Podge that's underneath that piece of paper. I'm just slowly working it all the way to the edge. And I started at the middle and worked my way from this, almost like a fan up. And now I'm gonna do the same with the bottom part of this piece of paper. Make sure all your edges are secure and down nice and tight and firm without any any as few as few wrinkles as possible but it's amazing on this foam and with that uh, spatula it really comes out pretty smooth then we move on to our other half you're going to start the exact same way as you did your first sheet but when you flip it over you're going to line up your s's so that it looks like one continuous sheet of paper then you continue on the right side exactly as you did on the left. Once our uh, Mod Podge is thoroughly dry, we're going to give it a little trim. I am leaving about a half an inch all the way around and do what you like. Whatever you know looks right, feels right to you, but I like the look of about a half an inch of the foam remaining visible. 
Now to age that white so it looks a little more like the rest of our newspaper. And the white is the closest you're gonna find. The other colors are way too dark for what we're doing. So just pick an off-white paint. I think this is plaster that I'm using here. And I'm just gonna go, I think uh, cashew is the other one that was really close in color and just go all the way around it to blend that newspaper with the actual foam to make it look like one. <clears throat> Now we use our other pieces of foam and you can make this newspaper as thick and dimensional as you want. It can be a two ply, it can be a three ply. <laughs> make it as thick as you want, as realistic as you want. And I am trimming off. I'm just gonna make mine one for the sake of what I'm doing right here for, uh, for example. And you want the sheet to be the exact same size as the original. After we trim that sheet, we paint the perimeter the same as we did our original sheet. Then we are going to fold it in half. And I know that seems weird, but we are going to fold it in half because newspapers usually have creases and we want this to look believable. So we're going to fold it in half and we are going to curl the sides out a little bit. This thing is really going to look dimensional. And once we get it the way we want it, we are going to glue it down. Not straight down, not right on top of it, but offset a little bit, like a newspaper would look after you've gone through it. And you're just gonna glue right around inside the perimeter of our newspaper. Are you ready for another taste of Halloween? Well, this time we're gonna take a thrifted item and repair and enhance it. It is an iconic Halloween item. It's a black cat. Well, here is my sweet little black kitty cat. He is made to look vintage um, and he actually has been worn <laughs> to, to a frazzle, poor little guy. Both his ears are chipped. Uh, his little uh, doodad around his neck is way messed up and in between his legs are cracked as well. There's chips on his toes, on his little boots. So we are going to uh, take all this little fun stuff off and we are gonna give him a makeover. He also evidently at one point was holding something in either hand and those items are long gone. And I think no one picked him up because they were afraid of the fact that he was cracked. But we are gonna take care of that with no problem and you will never ever know when we're finished that he ever had a boo-boo. We are going to use JB Well Quick Wood to repair this little guy. And this stuff is amazing and it's fun, fun to use. Uh, you're just going to take a little bit off of here and avoid your living cat so you can repair your fake cat. But you need a little bit of each, the brown and the center part, and you want to keep everything else covered but then you're gonna take it and you're gonna start molding it together. You're going to knead this and knead it and knead it until it is all one uniform color. And when that occurs, then the reaction has begun. So once it's one uniform color, it's gonna start to get hard. And it doesn't get as hard as fast as some things I've used but and it depends on the proportions that you you know put together as well but then you can start forming it into whatever shape you want it's amazing i've i've repaired lamps with this stuff i've repaired videos with this stuff and now uh little mr whiskers is gonna get two brand new ears because he likes to hear what's going on when the other kitties are talking around the water bowl <laughs> You can fill cracks, you can fill dents, and you can sculpt brand new little pieces for little critters <laughs> like this poor little guy. So he's getting a brand new ear, he's getting a mended ear. Um, the crack between his legs will get fixed and the little chip out of his boot will also get taken care of. And once we're, we're done, we're just gonna set him aside because he's gonna need to dry for about an hour or so. Once Mr. Whiskers is totally dry, 
and uh, it's really hard to the touch. You have to make sure before you get crazy with the sanding block. Then we take the sanding block to and sandpaper, depending on you know what you have available, but something very fine. And I am just knocking this down to where I feel the original ear would have been. And I'm getting it pretty smooth, even though his entire body is not smooth. His entire body looks like paper mache. It has dents in it and little uh, creases. So we want what we do to it to look the same. I decided that I can't call him Mr. Whiskers if he doesn't have whiskers. So he is meeting the drill. He was given some Novocaine for pain. So we didn't want him to have any issues, but I'm creating some little cavities on either side of his face to uh, house some little whiskers. And speaking of whiskers, we are going to use embroidery thread for said whiskers. <laughs> and I am just taking the embroidery thread and I'm stretching it out and I'm using my matte Mod Podge and I'm taking a little strand and I am just going to paint on Mod Podge. Paint it on and then give it a cut and lay it flat to dry and then do another one. And I'm going to make quite a few of these even though I know I won't use them all but that way I've got backup. And once I've got them ready to go and they are relatively dry and relatively firm, you're going to feel that they're, they've stiffened up a bit. You are going to take them and start to, on one end, unravel it just a little bit, maybe about an inch or so, because that is going to give us the whisker look. But make sure that the end stays intact because you need that end to put inside that little crevice that we drilled out to hold these cute little whiskers. So no, no whiskers, no tail, poor little cat. Poor little cat doesn't even have any clothes, poor thing. So we are going to make him a tail as well. We are gonna drill into his little fanny and create yet another little well that we can attach a tail to. And then, then we gotta make a tail. <laughs> to make his tail, I am using something called flower clay. And the beauty of this stuff is that it stays pliable, shall we say, even after it's cured. Which means that when Mr. Whisker has his tail on, even like a year from now, I can bend it a different direction. But I am just forming the clay and about the length and the diameter I want. And I am adding reinforced wire into it and then rolling it to get it to look like the kind of tail I think Mr. Whiskers would have. <laughs> Mr. Whiskers tail is nice and uh, cured now. Even though I can bend it, I can make it more curly if I want. <laughs> but we're just going to leave it as is because I like it. And I am going to paint the whole thing black and it will take a couple coats. And the nice thing about this is I didn't have to be real precise with how I made this tail. I didn't have to get picky because it has lumps in it, just like Mr. Whiskers. It has little creases in it, just like Mr. Whiskers. And it looks the same as he does. So it's gonna marry to his body beautifully. Now, Mr. Whiskers gets some paint. He gets some paint. His little face, his little boots, and his hands. All are gonna get a black chalk paint. And we're gonna go right over the glitter. I brushed off as much of it as I could, but uh, not super necessary to get it all off because it doesn't make a difference. It truly doesn't. And I am going to paint out everything. I am going to leave his eyes, his nose, and his mouth because I like them. I think they're super cute just the way they are. Time to give our sweet little kitty some clothes and I am using a nice bright green and it's not as this it's not as as vibrant in real life it truly is not but on film on camera <laughs> digital it is much brighter but it is a beautiful beautiful green and I have coordinated it with some glitter 
I love me some glitter and uh, in the right circumstance. And I have paired this up with some green glitter, which will get applied after this is dry. Recently, I came across a sale at Habe Labe on their glitter. And oh my gosh, the colors, the sizes of stuff. Oh my gosh, I was like a kid in a candy store. If candy were glitter and I was a kid. <laughs> so I kind of went on a glitter rampage because I feel that if you have a, a certain color of paint, you should always, if it's inexpensive, there's my green, that's the green we're gonna use. You should always have a coordinating, corresponding glitter to go along with it. Now that Mr. Whiskers has pants, now he's getting a shirt. And I'm using a really pretty vintage pink. I really think it's gorgeous. Love, love, love. And it will all come together in the end. You will see. <laughs> These colors do belong together. I will be using this bright pink and this muted pink that matches his shirt and this orange and black to replace his little ruffle that was around his neck. I completed his little ruffle around his neck and I've been busy, busy, busy enhancing his shirt. I added orange dots and little tiny green dots with that glitter. You can see his pants are all glittery. Ooh. <laughs> and now I'm just adding little circles around all my dots with my pink glitter dimensional paint. Mr. Whiskers will be going trick or treating. So he needed a little uh, treat bucket and I picked up these. It was a set of four at uh, the Dollar Tree. And I think they're super, super cute. I just think they're a little bit too plastic looking. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that sheen off of it by giving it a coat of pumpkin chalk paint. I'm even gonna paint out the eyes, the nose, and the mouth in a black chalk paint. I am cutting off the plastic handle and I'm replacing it with a wire handle because it will be easier to glue into his teeny tiny little paw. I have made some little shreds out of our crepe paper, just the two tones of pink to fill the little bucket. And I will also be adding some little tiny itty bitty sweet chocolate bars. Mr. Whiskers will also be getting a lollipop. I picked these up at uh, Hobby Lobby, uh, half off. I picked up this really fun glittery sticky ribbon at the Dollar Tree and I will be using it to put a stripe down either side of his pants. His little boots looked a little bland, a little boring. <laughs> so I thought I'd jazz him up a bit with some laces and a tie. A little bow at the top where the shoelaces will come together. And I'll be using my dimensional paint, my black dimensional paint to make the laces. And then the actual bow at the top, I will be using black embroidery thread. The newspaper has been delivered and our kitty cat is set to go trick or treating. So let's take a look at both of them. Well, you've already read this newspaper, so let's catch the newest edition. Hopefully it's gonna get delivered soon. Well, looky here, just in time for our morning coffee. There it is, the latest edition. And look how real it looks, it really does. And you can make these for any occasion and you can even personalize them for weddings and parties and events. Our old fashioned newspapers look right at home at this old timey newsstand. Were they really there? Maybe they were. <laughs> well, here's Mr. Whiskers. He's already out trick or treating. He must have gone to some great neighborhoods cause look at that candy he's already scored. Let's get a closer look at him. Check out his face, his little whiskers. He really has whiskers now. From his newly grown whiskers, to his fancy ruffled collar and those beautiful big old pom-poms. He is one new cat. And we gave him that tail. He's like, I'm a real cat now. <laughs> and you can see how the texture of his tail is just like the texture of his head and his hands. And check out his blingy little pants and that stripe from that sticky ribbon. And there's his lollipop, one of his first scores. He loves orange dreamsicle, so he really made out well. And look how much better his little boots look with shoelaces. Those slip-ons just aren't in style right now. <laughs> and how about his Halloween treat bucket? 
just those slight alterations make it look a little bit more vintage. Remember, this is how poor Mr. Whiskers began. Broken and abused, poor guy. And look at him now. You would never ever know his little ears were broken and that he was damaged, not beyond repair. Thank you again to Brandy, Annie, and Monica for joining me in the witching season, A Taste of Halloween. Make sure you check the links below for their channels and this fabulous four video playlist. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share it with your family and friends and anybody that absolutely loves Halloween like I do. You can follow me on Instagram and check out my shop on Etsy. You can support the channel by subscribing, so don't forget to subscribe. But for now, this is Dawn with Shabby Meets Bling. Thank you so much for watching, and I really hope to see you next time. Happy Halloween!